Hello, Dollyverse. How are you guys today? Aujourd'hui, on va. Look at this doll, okay? Now, this one is by far uh, the most, I guess, grail doll for me on the entire line of the BMR 1959 dolls right now that are available in wave one and wave two. I'm just calling her the Blasian one cause that's how she looks to me. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> she looks like a Blasian girl. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go with it. But um, it's not racist cause I have a friend that calls me Blasian, okay? Yeah, I'm not even joking. My actual nickname, okay? This friend and her entire family, everybody in her household calls me Blasian. Like, that's my name. Like, I call her and she'd be like, hey, what's up, Blasian? How you doing, girl? Like, she just decided that's my name. So she just calls me that. <laughs> and, and I'm totally okay with it. So, it is what it is. Anyway, this one was sent to Adonis by Kelsey, one of his dolly friends on Instagram. And I think she had like an extra one or something. I don't know. It's just something was going on. She just had an extra. You go follow her on Instagram. She's one of our doll collector friends. I might have a little bit of background noise. I don't know because I do have a visitor here right now. And I can't make everybody shut the hell up. So it just be like that sometimes, y'all. And I think Kelsey is Hmong, so shout out to y'all Hmong folks who are following us on here. I haven't seen a Hmong person in ages since we left New York, to be honest. But they have a little special place in my heart. Because all the Hmong people I've ever met are really nice and sweet to us. I don't know, I like them. They're not bougie, they're not uppity. Yeah, I have a couple of my other BMR people here and I'm so like amazed that my collection of BMR people, I call them BMR people, are kind of growing right now. It's just like, I don't know how this is happening. It's just like happening, I don't know. It's just completely like throwing me off because I didn't imagine that I would have four of them just sitting on a desk looking at me, you know what I'm saying? But here they go. So I am impressed, I am emperors. And those guys in the back are rocking some custom shirts that Ginu put together for me. Um, they're actually Barbie brand tops, but he put his designs on them for me. It's like a little snail samurai dude or something, I don't know. And then this one says, one of a kind, O-O-A-K, with a little girl's face on there, a little graphic. And those of you who are avid collectors, y'all know what OOAK stands for. So, yeah. And he also made a shirt for my daughter that has that same thing on it so she can match the doll. So I'm really uh, I'm really into it, y'all. I'm gonna show you what he made for my Blasian girl later. If you're not already following Ginu on Instagram, you need to because he's about to drop like a little line of tops or whatever or clothes for the dolls and um, with his custom designs on them. So that's gonna be fun. And he said that he would make it um, available to our viewers so you guys can have some Broken Dolly merch and all of our dolls will be united on Dollstagram in pictures, right guys? Okay, anywho, and so this lovely doll was designed by the wonderful Carlisle Nuera who is a designer over at Barbie Mattel. And she's wearing this outfit, which I believe is two pieces. She's got some jewelry she's rocking and she's got some like bright pink sneakers that she comes with. So we're gonna take her out and check out all the pieces that she comes with. And her insert is green right here, the background of her box. And you can see that she does have a stand behind her right there. That's the base. And once it's put together, it looks something like that over there. Oh my gosh. So I've gotten her out of the container and she wasn't that difficult to remove. She did have the plastic tabs that were sticking to the back of her head to keep her down in the box, which I don't like, but it wasn't a nuisance to get her um, you know, kind of unhooked from all of that. And she is, oh, man, like, 
I mean, I, I knew I was gonna like her out of the box, but I mean, I love her out of the box. She is so something else, just something else. A lot of character with this doll that I can already see. And I love that. So her outfit is two pieces. You've got this top portion here, which is like a half shirt with long sleeves and the sleeves have like a mesh look to them. It's stretchy fabric and her top says BMR 1959 on the front, of course. And then she's got on like a romper, it looks like almost. It kind of looks like bike shorts or like, I don't know, like racetrack prints here. But um, is that, is that a thing? I don't know what I just said. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm trying to say, you know. Me not speaking good English. But anyway, it looks like it's just plain, which is nice because that means that we can uh, rock that with some other stuff, mix match. And I'm gonna take the top off so you can get a better look at the romper underneath, but I just want to let you see how she comes straight out of the box. I see one of these braids here look like they got a little snagged because they are kind of out of shape, but that's okay. Not gonna sweat that just yet. And as far as her body, to me, she looks like she is a regular uh, made to move body, although, I don't know, because I've been getting like surprised by these dolls lately with their tall and petite body types that they sneak on in there. I have a regular Barbie made to move body here and she doesn't look taller than that body. So I know that it's the same size and her skin tone to me looks like it will match uh, like the skateboarder or the, um, who else had this skin tone? The skateboarder and the orange top made to move bodies, which is the same as this one here. So they are a complexion match for those of you who are wondering, but she already comes on a made to move body. So it's not like you need to find better articulation for this doll, which is one of the things I love about this line. Yes, they are price pointed at about 30 bucks each, but for a fashionista and a separate made to move body, you're gonna be spending about that much with tax. So, you know, now you don't have to do a whole body transplant on the doll because she already comes with the articulation that you need. However, if you wanna change her body type, like you wanna put her onto a curvy body or whatever, then you might need to know what skin tone you need to match. So if you choose to put her later on a petite uh, frame or a curvy frame, then you guys have an idea of what color you're gonna need for the skin tone swap. And I do believe that there are curvy dolls with this skin tone as well. Yeah, so we're not gonna get all into that, but I do wanna show you some other cool features about this doll. Like what, what? she come blank blanked out. And she got, look at her little manicure, you guys. That's another thing I really like about these girls is that they come with uh, nail polish already put onto the fingernails. She had gold. And then this one has the blue. So that's pretty cute. I like that. I wonder if all of them come with nail polish. I don't know. I don't know because I don't have all the girls. But these two that I have definitely have nail polish. So this ring kind of looks like like a key, like the whole ring is like a key going across the front of her hand, but it's actually two different pieces, see here? Those are the other end of her rings, the little stubs for her rings is the holes in her hands where the rings, like they pop in and out of, see? This is how they used to do it back in the day in the 90s when they had Barbie dolls with rings. All of them had rings like this that you just popped in and out of their fingers. So there's a giant hole there in her hand. Uh, it's very difficult to camouflage that hole once you remove the rings. So just keep that in mind. Also, these are very small parts, very, very small parts. You could and then this other side says BMR 1959, big chunky ring right there. Who's she fighting? She gonna go for, fight somebody? Like, <laughs> that's the only time we wore these big giant rings to go beat somebody up right y'all remember that i don't know what that's about because i was not part of that life i just heard rumors you feel me rumors hello and then she's got these big dangly earrings which i love and they're all silver her jewelry and then she's got a fanny pack 
right around her waist. This one looks much smaller than the one that came with my guide doll. And from the back, let's see if it's constructed the same way as his. This one, let me see, let me see. Where's the, where's the, the buckle at? Hey yo, hey yo ma, hey yo shawty. Can I holla at you for a second? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. All right, so here's a little buckle. And they look like they're constructed in a similar fashion because you could tighten and loosen the one that he came with too. But it didn't tighten enough at his waist that he could wear it around his waist. It was like so big that you had to wear it around his chest. And I had to do some adjusting to get it around his waist. So hers does fit like this on her waist, which I think is cool. As far as, but the color, I'm not really sure if I like this color. The royal blue with this outfit, I don't know. I think I would have preferred for it to be either like a gray color or maybe yellow. But I don't know about that blue. But it's okay to mix and match with some other stuff. That's another thing that I do like about these dolls is that um, their fashions, if you look at the entire ensemble, sometimes it just looks like a lot because of all the colors and the, and the like prints. But as individual pieces, if you pair them up with other plain things, they actually bring a lot of like pizzazz and uh, statements to the ensembles. So I'm okay with that, you know? Um, I do like breaking up the clothes and mixing and matching it with other stuff. I do like that a lot. And I like the bright colors because it really stands out on the shelf, you know? Her hair intrigues me the most. I really want to look at this hair closer. And then the shoes, if you look at her sneakers. So, <laughs> I used to sell Nike shoes. So I kind of have like an idea of different kinds of like basketball shoes that are popular. Okay, so tell me if I'm wrong. Don't these remind you guys of the Hirachis? Like, that's what these remind me of. Hirachi sneakers for basketball. They, of course, have usually a bunch of different colors in them, and this is just all pink. But if you were into customizing, I totally would customize these to look more like actual Hirachis um, with the colors. But that's how these look to me. They remind me of those. And those shoes are so comfortable. <laughs> they're kind of weird looking, but they're mad comfortable. So I'm just going to go with it. Hey, she's rocking some Hirachis, okay? I'm okay with that. Anyway. So her face is very, like very to me like it looks so serene and calm and she has these really wonderful features that really remind me a lot of blasian girls and um i am one so i guess i would know but yeah she's got like what we call the chinky eyes um <laughs> it's just very almond shaped eyes that resemble a lot of people from uh asian cultures have eyes that are shaped like this and I feel like a lot of half black Asian people inherit that eye shape and that's one of the giveaways of like how you can tell a Blasian person from just I don't know I guess a full black person um we have the chinky eyes and her lips are so plump and juicy looking and I'm always a big fan of that and then as you can tell she also has a little bit of baby hair around the edges of her hairline, which is such a, <laughs> this is like an ethnic community like thing. <laughs> a lot of black girls, a lot of Hispanic girls, and definitely a lot of mixed girls wear our hair with our um, baby hair kind of styled a little bit. It's not just like randomly flying all around our head. Normally there's a very deliberate brushing and styling of the baby hairs going on and it's like a subtle thing that i guess you wouldn't really notice unless you were just part of this community and like knew that that was a thing but amongst girls who wear their hair this way they do notice when other girls have their hair like laid a certain way for their baby hairs <laughs> it's like guys who are wavers like nobody else outside the wave community really cares or notices when guys have nice waves in their hair but the other guys that do waves, like, they always notice when another dude has good waves. You know what I'm saying? The people who wear the baby hair, we be noticing. But outside of that community of people that do that, they probably just don't even pay any attention to it. But anyway, I do. 
And I actually draw baby hairs onto my doll sometimes if I feel like their foreheads look too big or just to kind of make them look a little bit different. I will end up drawing on uh, baby hairs myself. So I like the way that they did this. Um, it does look like it's been styled. Just her face in general, her whole face up, like it's so simple, but it just looks really good. And she looks very realistic. And you can see she's got some very subtle eyeshadow on just above her eyelids. And they really made her eyes like small and squinty. And I love that. And then another thing about this doll that I really love is her hairstyle, this long, skinny, micro braids that they've rooted into the doll's head. I don't know how they did this. The ends all look like they've been closed off so they don't just unravel. And it looks so authentic. I have so many cousins on my dad's side that wear their hair in braids like this. And I've always been envious of their hairstyles because I cannot do this with my own hair. And even with like a weave, which a lot of girls just use extensions and like braid it into their own hair to get the length. And it looks really pretty, but I'm like allergic to synthetic hair or something like the fibers that they use for that braiding hair. I cannot have it touch my skin cause I'll just break out. So I've never been able to rock braids like this, but I really want to. It's like my dream hairstyle. <laughs> Oh uh, boy. And I love that now I have a doll that has this type of hairstyle that I can uh, play around with and display. So I'm so into that. And then let's see. I'm going to take off this top so we can see what her romper looks like. Okay, let me explain why this romper is a total winner. It's because there's no opening for this romper. We don't have Velcro closures or any snaps or buttons or anything that is keeping this thing open or closed, which means it's just one full piece that you have to slide on and off of the doll's body. And although that may seem inconvenient, these kinds of clothes normally have a pretty good stretch factor to them to help it to slide on and off. And the made to move bodies are just made to move so you can get this stuff on and off of your dolls a lot easier when you're working with this level of articulation so that you can get these types of pieces on your dolls without really uh struggling so it fits a lot more snug on the doll's uh body like figure it just looks a lot better and more natural it looks like real clothing because we don't have velcro closures that are just being all bulky in the back of our, you know, clothes. We don't have stuff like that for people. So, so it just looks more natural on dolls when they don't either. But of course, those kinds of pieces are not easy to just make all the time for these dolls because of all the different designs that they come up with for the clothing. You do have clothes that it's a necessity that you have those closures. So you're not going to be seeing that on like everything that Mattel makes for their dolls. But I love when I do happen to run into those kinds of pieces because I just know they're going to fit the dolls a lot better and look so much better on them than the ones that open and close with Velcro. So that's really good. And her hair, man, her hair is everything. Like this is the best feature of this doll in my opinion is her hair. Um, I can see here that the hair is literally rooted See, it's rooted into her head, already braided. So each braid is like a chunk of hair that, you know, would be like an individual strand that's just in there. And though this bun is really cute and pretty, I'm gonna have to take it down because I need to see what I'm working with because I did always plan on restyling this doll as far as like giving her different hairstyles and stuff. Um, not like taking her hair out completely to give it a different texture, but man, the, the fiber that this hair is made with feels just like, um, I don't know, very similar to regular Barbie's hair texture. It's very smooth and silky and, and I can see at the top of her head here that she has like a triangular parting in her hair to get this hair up here for the bun so 
uh, I don't know how permanent that parting is going to look once her hair is all down. After I took down her ponytail, her bun, now I can get to the root of her hair a little bit easier. And like I said, all of the braids are just rooted right into her head like that. Um, not a whole lot of spacing in between the lines of hair up here in the front, but there is bigger spacing in the back. So, but that doesn't really alarm me because the hair in the front is what you're going to see the most. So I'm not that concerned that the hair is a little bit sparse in the back, but it's not really bad. I mean, it's braided hair. What do you, what do you expect? You know? Yeah. So her hair definitely will need to be a little bit finessed <laughs> because it's all like big huge curls right now from the bun that it was tied up in for who knows how long and but it's not that difficult to get the hair to lay flat and straight just need a little bit of work done and her earrings are removable they just pop right out and you can stick it right back in they have like the short stub at the end without the little the little hook shaped nub that they normally have in there that get like stuck in the ears they don't have that with these dolls. So that's nice because then you can switch the earrings a lot easier from doll to doll. This one that came off of my other doll over there in the corner. Um, this is her earring, but they can switch earrings if I want them to because they're so easy to put on and take off. So what do you guys think of her overall? Do you guys have this doll? Do you want this doll? And have you done any customizing to her? Tell me in the comments what you've done to your doll to personalize her if you have. And if you're following us on Instagram, tag me in some of your pictures so I can check out your photos and maybe get some ideas or see what you've done to customize her. And I'm so excited to redress this doll and try out different fashions on her and do different hairstyles on her and some photo shoots and now she can finally hang out with her friends who've been aching for her to come on out of her box. My dolls look like they're being tortured when they're in their boxes. <laughs> yeah, these are an excellent line of dolls. I highly recommend them for you guys who are really like really deep into collecting yeah, and I am glad that these exist because they're all very multicultural looking everybody looks good together in a group but they also look spectacular on their own and with other dolls so I'm not complaining about that like I'm really into it and I hope to see this line continue to move forward and we get more from this line um, I said this in a previous video but I'm gonna say it again I really, really, really look forward to, like in a dream world, right, where I could have anything I wanted, I would see a line of male dolls designed by Carlisle, and all of them have different skin tones and different features and different head sculpts and rooted hair, but on made to move bodies, just like the BMR guys that we have right now, but just like an entire line of them, that would be so killer, and I would definitely support that. But like I said, that's in a perfect world. Who knows? Who knows what may happen? But anyway, I'm with it. All right, I'm gonna give her a little change of clothes. And yo, yo, uh, tell me why I seem to have lost the footage for the last part of this uh, video. <laughs> I changed her clothes and restyled her hair and I was looking for my footage, I couldn't find it. So I have to give you guys the uh, update because I'm not about to look all through my files for this lost footage. Miss BMR Blasian Lady, can you come here please? So here we go. The new look consists of her hair is styled just straight down. Most of those curls that like the wrinkly wavy curls that were in her hair from the buns, um, they've loosened up. You can kind of see that the texture has dropped a little bit from the hair, but it's not totally straight yet. And Miss Blasian has picked one of these graphic shirts that she wants to rock. And y'all, did I tell you that I live near a Walmart and an airstrip? So it's just constant planes going over our house at night. I don't know why they fly at night, but it's really annoying. Anyway, <laughs> let's try to ignore them as much as possible. 
So she picked out this one that has the little baby tiger um, image on it and it just kind of wraps around the side of her shirt there as you can see she's trying to steal my stilo because she saw that shirt that Jinu had made for me with the baby tiger on it and she was like I want one so that's how she ended up with that anyway but I think it looks cute on her whoa we got a little decapitation going on down there anyway um, she's wearing these like pleather pants those shoes down there I think them shoes came on homegirl over there with the purple hair that I showed you how we straightened her hair in a previous video go ahead and check that out if you haven't but yeah those are her shoes that she's borrowing so they seem to fit her just fine even though they originally came on a petite doll's feet and she's also borrowing her earrings I think they look pretty cool on her so that's the update she has not been rebodied I don't plan on giving her a body transplant at this point but things change around here constantly so don't be surprised if you do happen to see her on Instagram or something with a new body one of these days I don't know but for now she looks just fine the way she is really really like her and She's so much fun to redress and restyle. I don't know about y'all, but I think that she looks really good next to her other BMR 1959 friends, even though they're all redressed. It's definitely a killer crew that I totally love seeing together. And if you're new to collecting, I really highly recommend these dolls as starter dolls to pop your collection off on the right foot. So go ahead and tell me in the comments what you guys think about how she turned out after being redressed and slightly restyled. Just what do you guys think about this line in general? Let me know in the comments because I really would love to hear your thoughts. All right, Dolly friends, it's time for me to go, but I'm gonna see you guys in the comments and over on Instagram, as well as the next video right here on Broken Dolly TV. So make sure you don't go anywhere. Thanks for hanging out with me here today. Have a Dolly day. Um, but seriously, you gonna have to find another shirt because uh, you can't just be stealing my look. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be like me. Can't nobody be like me. I'm gypsy. Be like me.